Monica from Life is Art. And scrap, it's almost Monday. Let's create. I hope you had uh, a good weekend. I hope you um, spent some time with your family and your friends. This is the beginning of the March break for those of us here, and at least in this part of Ontario. And so hanging out with the with the kiddos and uh, <laughs> hey Carol nice to see you're watching and um yes and so we are going to do some crafting because you know we got to take a break every so often just to do some crafting don't we <laughs> good evening Heather nice to see you're watching and Joanne's here too hello hello if you're popping on to watch just say hello or howdy so I know you're here and if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay. So I am going to be doing a layout this evening using some stamps from my stash. I know we like to look at the catalogs and see all the fun new things. And of course, during Stamptacular sale that's going on right now, we've been scrolling through the oodles and oodles of stamps that are available but you know what? Our stamps are tools. And so I always make sure that I pick stamps when I purchase stamps that I know I'm going to use again and again and again because they're tools and they're meant to be used. So tonight I'm actually, I went through all of my stamps and I pulled out a whole bunch, but I settled on four stamp sets that I'm going to be using. And some of them are really, really old, as you can tell by the color of the stamps. These Stamps are, yeah, uh, quite quite old. <laughs> In fact, I bought them used, and um, and they and that was a long time ago, probably ten years ago. So these have been around for a while, but these are fun. These are called State of Mind. They're old, close to my heart stamps, and they've got little definitions of words and things on there. So I'm going to be using one of those. I also have this one, which isn't that old, but it's a couple years. And this was the Moments with You stamp and thin cuts. So you had all these fun sentiments. And then there was the thin cuts that cut out I love. So I'm going to be using one of the stamps. And I'm also going to be using the thin cut for love. And then I also pulled out the In Full Bloom scrapbooking stamp set. And I'm going to be using the two large flowers, this cluster of flowers, the leaf, Sorry, not this flower. This one and this one. And the two butterflies. Sorry, I had a hiccup there. <laughs> and then I also have the um, In Full Bloom Card Making Workshop stamp and thin cuts. And I'm going to use the large uh, butterfly from this one to go with those middle and small size ones from the other collection. So it's really kind of fun when you go through your stamps, and a lot of people like to organize their stamps, and a lot there's always a lot of discussion about how people organize their stamps, and how they do this, and how they do that. And I'm very old school, slash unorganized. <laughs> and so the way I organize my stamps is I put them all in a box. You know, I have, they're actually recycled, um, repurposed uh, Jamaican patty boxes, and they're the perfect size for my stamps and I put my stamps in them and I do not categorize them. I don't do anything. I just stick them in there willy nilly. And so for me, I like that because I get to flip through, you know, all my stamps every time I start a project and I get to look at them and see them over and over and over again. And it reminds me, Ooh, I have that stamp. Ooh, I like that stamp. Ooh, I haven't used that stamp in a while. And so, <laughs> even though it's probably the worst way to organize your stamps, it works for me. Because, just like my name implies, life is art. I like the art aspect of scrapbooking and card making. And so, by seeing my stamps and the images and the sentiments, it triggers something in my brain that gets my creative juices going. And so, I like being able to flip through them all and just pull, 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 pull out random ones. And then decide what I'm going to do from there. And then I just shove them all back in and get ready for the next project. <laughs> hey, Mom, nice to see you're watching. 
Yes, Joanne, it is. It's fun to flip through and get inspired. So if I had just sat down to make a layout and I hadn't gone through that process of looking at my stamps, um, all random, I might not have found all of these ones that I wanted to use tonight. I may have only pulled out one stamp set going, oh, okay, I want flowers. Let me just go and find that flower one and, and, and that's it. But because I flipped through, I saw more. So that's kind of my process. It gives you a little bit of an idea into the process of how I start projects sometimes. Um, when we do our 30 minute card making stash dash, it, it makes it a little bit harder because it does take more time. It really does. It does take more time to flip through. <laughs> so if you are short on time, then that's probably not the organization system that you will go for, right? So I'm going to start my layout this evening. I'm doing a 12 by 12. I'm going to start with White Daisy cardstock. And um, I this is actually inspired by a layout that I saw on Pinterest. Because, you know, we scroll our Pinterest and get all inspired that way, too. It, scrolling through Pinterest is like flipping through my stamps. <laughs> and so this is inspired by a layout that was posted by at Scrappy Soulmate. And um, the name kind of actually works with the theme of my layout. And I thought it was just kind of an interesting background that she, she, he, the, the creator made. And, um, and so I thought I would share it with you because I think it's really cool. So from our collection that we're featuring this month, the um, Life's a Hoot collection, I really like this paper that's sort of um, like watercolor, spongy, smooshy kind of pattern. And so what I did was I modified the pattern or the, the layout that I saw a little bit. Um, the, the creator of the layout that I was kind of being inspired by used a six inch width. Um, but because I'm using two photos instead of one, I decided to bump it out a little bit and do seven inches. So um, but I cut a large, just a seven inch strip and then I cut my sizes because I want my pieces to kind of fit one into the other. So let me start laying things down here. So this one here is a three inch by, I'm sorry, seven inch by three inch. And then the next strip that I cut off of my large strip was a two inch piece. Okay, so we're still seven inch by two inch, and you can see the pattern kind of flows from one to the other, right? I kept it in order, so hopefully I'll manage to keep it in order as we're creating here. And then I have a one and a half inch piece. I just really liked the pattern this creates. And then I have a one inch piece. And then I have... I can grab it. <laughs> I have a three quarter of an inch piece. Now, um, I should say that those are sort of my finished measurement sizes because I did give myself a tiny little bit, maybe just under an eighth of an inch extra because I want to distress my edges. So I've got my scissors here. And I'm going to go around the edges of all my pieces and distress the edges. And that will kind of um, change the size a smidge. I think the original one, they actually tore the pages, like with a ruler. So they had a bit of a shaggy edge on them. But I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do edge distressing. And if I had really thought about this, um, I would have done some of these ahead of time. Because now you have to sit here and listen to me <laughs> distress the edges of my paper. But that's okay. You can you can just talk amongst yourselves. Um, do you like doing layouts that are simple in terms of pattern paper? Like this layout, this is the only pattern paper I'm using. So this is going to be very sort of simplified in terms of pattern. Is that your style? Or are you the kind of paper crafter 
who loves all the things where you just want to pile on all the patterns and all the layers and all the good stuff. Let me know in the comments. Are you a simple scrapper or are you an all in kind of scrapper or card maker? Or do you like a mix? Because I think I'm kind of in the boat where I just like a mix. It's just whatever happens to suit me at the time. That's what I go for. <laughs> Are you like that? Are you an, uh, just, you know, whatever, however I feel day of, that's how we're doing it. Yeah. I think that's generally how I feel. Because I kind of, I do, like I said, I do it for the art. I like creating. Um, sadly, <laughs> Um, because I mostly do this um, scrapbooking and card making because I like creating stuff, I don't always get my layouts. Now I got to make sure I'm going the right way here. I don't always get my layouts into um, into albums. <laughs> so I have a lot of layouts that are all done. Some of them need photos. A lot of them need journaling because I must admit, I'm good at the artwork. I'm not so good at the writing. Um, Samantha and I were talking about that because there's a lot of helps with Close to My Heart. Different um, uh, little training things. The storyteller one with uh, Stacy Julian that helps you, you know, tell the story and develop your journaling skills. And I have it and I need to take the time to sit and go through it. <laughs> Because I'm not so good with the words on my pages. I'm good with the pretty things. You know, the scissors and glue stuff. But the writing, I kind of lack there. So a lot of my um, pages that are waiting to go into albums are also waiting for journaling. And some of them are waiting for photos. There we go. Do you have things like that? Things that are not quite done, but you had fun making them? <laughs> Depends on the pictures you have. You like a mix. It's true. Sometimes the photos kind of, um, kind of determine um, what you want to do, right? Because if your photos are busy enough, then you don't really need a lot going on in, in, on the page. Because the photos are really the star of the show anyway. That's so I've been told. <laughs> and, okay, Heather likes simple pages. Awesome. And Joanne likes a mix. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it's fun that, and I, and I really enjoy when we do, like, our layout tag and our crops. And you get to see what other people are making because we post the photos and, and, um, and you can scroll through and see all the layouts. And, and um, I think it's really nice because you get to see a whole variety of ways of doing things, right? If you only ever look at your own stuff, then you're not getting inspiration from other people. And I think that's important, right? That's why we have art galleries and things in the world. Because we want to be inspired by other people's creativity and you know, you see something, it's like the scrolling on Pinterest. You see something and you're like, ooh, I could do that. Let me try that. I have some photos that would work with that. Or I need to make a card that looks like that, you know. And you put your own twist on it and you make it your own. But you were inspired by other people's creativity. And I like that about our little group here is that we are always good at sharing and, and um sharing photos and talking about what we're making. It's really nice. All right, we're almost there. Last little bit. There we go. So we've roughed up all of our edges. We've got little bits of paper flying around everywhere now. <laughs> I'll just kind of whoosh, swish them off to the side. And so now what I want to do, these are now about seven and a quarter. So that gives us um, four and three quarters. So you want two and three eighths. So two and three eighths in from the side. And then we're going to kind of center it from top to bottom. Two and three eighths in. 
and let's kind of figure out how much spacing we want. There, that looks good. All right, now we can go ahead and stick them down. And so this, quite often when we do um, layouts, there's sort of the three, two, one method where you do um, like a third of the page is one thing and then two parts of it as another and then one part as another. So this is kind of a different take on that where it's, um, you know, it's just kind of fading off. It's getting smaller as you go up. And I really liked that effect on the layout that um, the person on Pinterest posted. And so that's what drew me to it. Sometimes you just see an idea and then it just sparks something and you're like, ooh, yep, gotta, gotta try that. So let's stick this down like so. Who else scrolls on Pinterest? Anybody else? <laughs> I, 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 I must admit, I spend probably too much time scrolling on Pinterest. Usually because it's hard to find stuff sometimes. If you're looking for something in particular. And other times it's just because I have nothing else to do and I want to scroll on Pinterest. <laughs> hey Debbie, nice to see you're watching. And, oh, some comments here I missed. Mary likes a mix. Yes. Mary, your pages are just, oh my goodness, so gorgeous all the time. <laughs> I'm reading comments here. Yep, Heather, I we're not alone, right? Piles of pages and not much in the albums. And you know what? It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. And it probably maybe come to help me in the end because I don't scrapbook in chronological order. And so for people who scrapbook in chronological order, as they go, they put it in albums. And it's fantastic because then they've got finished albums and they can look through them. But because I don't scrapbook in order, I just go willy-nilly here and there, however my mood strikes me, then now I have a whole bunch of layouts and I will have to put them in some sort of order, depending on how I want to organize my albums, and <laughs> get them in there, right? But I can kind of lay out my layouts. It's going to be a, I'm going to have to, you know, rent a gym someday and do it. <laughs> Alrighty, just checking. I saw some other ones. Definitely had fun making the layouts. Yay, you got them in your albums. Uh-huh, the journaling. I don't know what it is about journaling, right? It's the journaling that kind of befuddles us sometimes. And it's hard to, if you're scrapbooking photos that you don't know what's in there, like, say, um, you know, a spouse's family or um, things like that, where you just, you don't know the story behind it, so you don't know what to say, right? I'm good with putting a title on every now and then. Anyway, the photos that I am going to be scrapbooking today are these photos of my Grammy and granddaddy. So this is my granddaddy and my Grammy, and this is their neighbor, Steve. And um, I was totally inspired by their outfits and their flowers. And I'm guessing this was probably one of my grandparents' anniversaries because they both have corsages on. And so they're obviously dressed up for going out and celebrating. And then also there was a picture of my grandmother, my Grammy, and um, standing along in front of all the beautiful, um, oh, why can I not? Geraniums. I couldn't think of the name of the flower. My grand, my grand, granddaddy always had beautiful geraniums along the side of their house. And But I was inspired by the color of the shirt and the skirt and, and the flowers there. And so I thought this pattern paper would just go beautifully with that. So I've got my two photos and I've also cut a mat for them out of Lagoon, which is kind of a big jump from what's in the pictures, but hopefully it will work in in the end. Um, but I cut it to the exact same size as the photo, if you can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, do one of these things. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about? I'm going to do one of these things where I actually put the photo 
a little bit off kilter so the mat's going to be behind it so I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive to my photo like so Ooh, spinning around and I don't like putting adhesive too close to the edge um, of my photo just in case I want to tuck something and then I'm just going to stick that on willy-nilly didn't line it up none of that goodness and then we're going to stick the other one on all willy-nilly like so we'll have this one oh and I should say that our our cardstock has two sides so if you notice this cardstock here is darker than this one it's the same color it's just that this is the dark side and this is the light side so I decided to step it up a little bit and do one dark and one light just for fun and then we can go ahead and stick that one on there like that but I'm also going to um, angle my photos on my page like this so I think I probably because I've got that um, um <laughs> because I've got the um, 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 um it's distressing I'm gonna need to pop these up a bit so I'm gonna grab some foam tape boy oh boy I'm having trouble talking tonight. Uh, my kids and my husband are out in the dining room making homemade pizzas. Got the dough all ready for them and they help chop up the toppings. And so now they're, they're assembling pizzas. So that's going to be yummy. So maybe that's part of my problem is I'm kind of sitting here drooling, thinking about homemade pizza. <laughs> Usually we order pizza. Um, but my husband can't eat the stuff from the store, from the shop. So, so he, as a request for March break, he said, do you think we could do homemade pizza? And I said, sure we can. <laughs> so that's what we're doing tonight. So let's take some of this backing off. And I didn't need to add a lot of foam tape to this because it's basically just to help my photos stick, even with that... Um, <laughs> distressing and behind that gives it some lift right the edges are lifted so my photos don't want to sit flat so we're just gonna make them a little flatter by adding some lift with some foam tape so I'm gonna go ahead and stick my photos on willy-nilly kind of about like that just a little a little askew now as I said the original layout had a single photo I think it was probably a four by four or a three by three and um and just one of them so I made mine a little narrower um and a little bit taller so this one's a three by four and this one's a little narrower it's four this way but I think it's two and a bit this way um to kind of accommodate for two photos and still have the same the same feel now, the other thing that I want to add is I want to add that um, strip that says love from this State of Mind stamp set. It says love. Love is a noun, a deep and enduring emotional regard, usually for another person, tender, affectionate, beloved person, sweetheart. And so I thought this would be perfect for this layout with my grandma and granddaddy um, for their anniversary. And so that's what we're going to do. And I have gone ahead and cut a piece of grape cardstock. <clears throat> and I'm using the light side. And I'm going to kind of have it down here somewhere. But I want to go ahead and stamp this. I've got my, um, my definition all on this long stamp block. And I'm going to use black ink for this. Let me just open this up and try not to get it on my layout and inking 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 and considering that this is you know umpteen years old I probably don't need to season it and I have used it before so that should be all good now I'm pulling this close to me here so I can hopefully line this up like so and get it all stuck down. Lovely. That worked out well. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I have a pickle in my throat. 
So there's our nice little definition. It's nice to add extra words onto a layout. Now for my title, I want to use this uh, Moments With You stamp. I've gone and cut out the word love using black cardstock. So I'm just going to set that there on my layout. You're not even going to see it. But then I want to stamp out every moment with you. I think that's great when you've got a couple <laughs> and, um, you know, that they get along. <laughs> so I love every moment with you seems appropriate. So I've got myself a piece of Lagoon and I've used the dark side just like I used for the mat for this photo. And I cut this one to three and a half by five eighths. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this every moment with you on it. And I'm going to aim for the center of my cardstock because I kind of, I think I want to dovetail the ends of this one. There we go. Every moment with you. Such a pretty sentiment. So I'm just going to lay these on my layout for now. So I think I'm going to want this right around there and have the love kind of down onto that. And I'm going to dovetail. Mm, do I want to dovetail? Okay, I'm going to think about that. You guys let me know as I'm creating whether I should dovetail that or leave it as a rectangle um, because everything else is rectangular so just let me know what you think what your opinion is on that and <clears throat> then next I wanted to bring in these beautiful florals from the in full bloom scrapbooking stamp set and I know a lot of you have used these a lot these are fabulous florals and you know what when you find those florals that you just love you got to go with it, right? <laughs> so I've gone ahead and stamped them out using the Intense Black ink. I'm just going to scooch this off to the side a little bit. Maybe I'll scooch it quite a bit off to the side. And I'm going to do some coloring with some of my Tri-Blend markers. So for these florals, I'm going to be using Vintage Blue Blend and Hydrangea Blend. And then for the leaves, I'm going to be using the dull green. Okay, so let me see. Let's start with the hydrangea blend. And I'm going to go straight for the light color first. And I'm going to go ahead and just color this first big floral with the light and so I'm just going in little circles you know me I like coloring in circles and it helps when you've got curved edges like on a flower when you're coloring in circles because it helps helps me anyway stay in the lines so I'm going to use the lightest color first and just color them all in like that then I'm going to switch to the mid color and I'm going to kind of do some swishing that's what I call it, where you start in the center and then you just make lines and you're kind of following the lines that are already in the flower. And I'm only going up about two thirds to three quarters the way up the petal. Then I'm going to switch to the dark end of the hydrangea and I'm going to just do a few little swooshes between a third to a half the length of the flower like that. Okay. Now you could leave it exactly the way it is, and if you're really good at doing the coloring, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and just go over it one more time with the light, and that helps to blend those other colors together, so if you have any weird lines, um, this process kind of helps with that. There we go. And then I'll repeat this on another flower. So let's go ahead and do this other one. Starting with the light and coloring it all in. So fun. If you have any little white bits near the edge, it's okay. Just pretend it's a lighter color. The, the markers do tend to spread just a tad after you're done coloring. Um, and then we're going to come in with the mid and fill in some little lines. 
up there like that. Now, see how this, let me lift it up so you can see. See how this little petal is underneath this one? So I'm going to come in and just like make a shadow and follow underneath there. Okay. And then when I come in with the dark, I'm going to do my lines in the center like so. And then I'm going to come to where it's underneath that other petal. And I'm going to add some more dark there as well. Right? Because we're creating a little bit of shadow that makes depth. And it makes your coloring kind of look a little more realistic sometimes when you do that. And so let's go ahead and add some more light back in there. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix it up. I'm going to add in some of the vintage blue. I'm going to start with the light. And you know what? This looks like it all one sprig of flowers. But we can pretend that it's like a bouquet of flowers. And we can mix up the colors a little bit. So let's start with our light. Now, some people do the opposite. They start with the dark and work their way to the light, which is totally fine. You can totally do that. It's just what your preference is. And um, sometimes it's just how you learn to do it. <laughs> and that's the way you do it. So we're going to start with the light, and we're going to follow the same process. We're going to go to the mid. Now, these petals that are under the edge here, I'm just going to go ahead and color those in with the mid. And this one will go around the edge like that and kind of rough it up. And then this one I'll do the little lines. And then when we come in with the dark, let me lift this up. I'm going to go ahead and go right around the edge of this flower here with the dark. In fact, this little petal might as well all be dark. And then go around this one too. And that gives us that depth that we're trying to create. And then... We'll just come back in on this one and this one with some light. And there we go. And then let's do these other ones. So starting with our light and filling it in like so. And you know what? I might do both of these at the same time. So there's this little bud on the end right here. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it in too while I'm doing the other one. I usually don't do more than one flower at a time because the longer you wait in between adding the other colors in, um, the less blended it will be. And again, I'm going to add some darkness around underneath the petals that are on top. And, um, and make... Make the shadows. Making the shadows. Sorry, I'm getting to the point where I'm um, coloring and not talking. <laughs> so we'll go around the edge like that. Add the shadows. Add a little blip. And I'm not even going to add the X. Well, I was going to say I'm not going to add it, but I will. I'll come back in with the light. Add a little bit of blending. Why not? There we go. Okay, then for our leaves, we're going to be using the dull green. And we're going to basically do the same concept. We're going to start with the light. And I'll do two leaves at a time. Go ahead and add the light. And then we're going to add some of the mid. And you can just kind of follow where the lines are. And of course, we're going to add a little bit of shadow where it's underneath the leaf or the petal of the flower. And then we'll add some dark just where those lines are. And around the petal like that and then we can come back in with the light and just add a little bit more of it and that's it now we can swivel around and do these two like that color the stem a little bit <clears throat> here we go and the mid We'll add a little bit inside because this leaf is kind of curled and then a little bit there and a little bit in the center and then add a little bit of dark just like that just a little squiggle a lot of my coloring is just squiggling <laughs> do you guys color in squiggles like me or do you are you a little more careful with your things <laughs> 
And then for this large flower, I think what I want to do is I'm just going to start with the mid color on this one. I want this flower to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to come in with the mid and just color the whole thing in. And we're going to skip the light all together. So I'm going to kind of follow the lines on the petals because that will help me not make weird shapes <laughs> with my with my coloring and I'm going to go around the edge there a little bit you'll notice that I'm spinning my paper as I color and I find that's helpful especially if you're trying to follow lines and the other thing is when you're using markers now I squiggle but you don't want to like push against the nib so much. You it, Markers work better when you pull because you're actually pulling the ink down the nib, right? So it's not the best idea to do too much scriggling, but I do it anyway. <laughs> you know, sometimes we break the rules. It's okay. It's your markers. <laughs> they just might not... Have the nice nib for as long. And just going to go ahead. I'm going to leave a little bit of whiteness in the center there. Um, these are kind of like poppies. And I don't know if there's blue poppies, but I'm pretty sure there's lots of different colors of poppies. And I think it's really pretty. I also like that it's not like a full open one. It's kind of like a half, half swished up one. And that kind of looks nice when you're creating a cluster of florals, which we're going to do. So just going ahead. Boy, this is taking longer than... I thought this one will go fast because it's just one color, but, you know. We are going to add some of the dark. So just here in a second, as soon as I get these last little, last little bits, we can go ahead and add some of the dark. I love this new... This is a new one for me, this vintage blue and um, first time using it on this project. So I'm going to add some dark in the places where the back side of the flower is showing, all the little roughly, the roughly bits, and also down inside the roughly bits. And you can kind of just follow the lines like that and then come out from this side like that now I don't want to go too far oops <laughs> I don't want to go too far before I do some blending because the blending will work better if it's freshly positioned so just going to go ahead and blend in that a little bit there we go and then oh Look at this. I can just go back and forth. <laughs> We're just going to double end it. We're going to be like Star Wars with a double ended lightsaber. So we're going to add some mid. And then we're going to come in with the dark. Sorry, that was the dark. This is the mid. And we're going to color that in. And then add a little bit of dark down in there. And color it, blend it in. A little bit here, blend it in. It's excellent skills that I'm showing here, I tell you. And a little bit here, and we'll blend it in just like that. Looks good. Okay, and now I got to make sure I put them on the right end. So this is the dark, and this is the mid. Good. Alrighty, now that we've done that, we got to do some fussy cutting. Always with the fussy cutting. You know, it wouldn't be a layout with Monica unless there was fussy cutting. <laughs> so we're going to go around, and I'm actually trying to stay a little bit closer than I normally do. and But I'm still leaving a halo. I'm not following right on the line. But because these are kind of dainty florals... 
I'm kind of trying to keep it fairly close. And we're just going to go all the way around. Now, I think these were also available at one time with the thin cuts. I don't, I don't think these are available anymore, anywhere. But I could be wrong about that. But it's the same for anything in your stash. If you don't have thin cuts to cut them out, then you just grab your scissors and go to town. And we just go in and out, pivoting the paper. The pivoting of the paper is what really helps you get into all the little nooks and crannies. If you try to move your scissors to get into all those places, it'll you'll find it's more jaggedy and um, it doesn't flow as nicely. So just keep working your way around. Now, I am not going to make you sit and watch me do all the flowers that I'm going to use on this layout because by the magic of Facebook and videos, <laughs> I have already prepared some ahead of time. Yay! <laughs> so I just wanted to show you a couple examples of what I did. But I used all the same colors for my entire <clears throat> range of flowers. So just the hydrangea blend, the dull green blend for the leaves, the vintage blue for some of the flowers, and... The, oh, for one, I'll show you in a minute. I For the um, butterflies, I added one more color, <clears throat> and it was a brighter, darker blue, just to kind of get that little hint of lagoon going that we have with the title and the mats. I thought we needed to pull that in, so I thought I would add that with the butterflies. And I mixed it in with this vintage blue. And you know what? It's probably not everybody's first choice of combinations, but it worked for me and gave the look that I wanted, I think. I'm going to go with it anyway. And yeah, so sometimes you just have to play. What I always do is because I stamp and I leave the scrap paper around, I use my markers on the scrap paper and I just test the colors side by side and say, hmm, is that going to work? <laughs> and if they work good enough, I say, yes, they're going to work. Let's go for it. So there's a couple florals ready to go. Let's bring our layout back in. And again, we haven't stuck down all of our pieces yet, but now we're going to kind of go a little faster here because we've got some stuff already done ahead of time. So here is some of these pretty little florals that I did ahead of time, and I want to kind of create a nice little cluster around my title, like that. And then I also colored in some of the standalone leaves that are in the collection. And so, let me see, I'm gonna tuck one here, like that, and then maybe one over here like that very nice and you can see i kind of changed up where i was coloring the florals so these ones the ones at the end with the little bud are the purpley ones and these ones the one at the end is the blue ones you know so you got to kind of make some variety and then down here this is why i haven't stuck anything down because i have to kind of kind of decide how things are gonna go so I've got some bigger ones. I also did this big one. And this one I used the mid and the dark from the hydrangea blend to, to, um, to do this one. And just going to stick that down there and see how that goes. And then I've got this pretty little number here. And just going to tuck that there for now. And... I'm trying to decide if I want to go above or below the words. I might put the words right down at the bottom like that. And then I can come kind of across here with the florals. That's kind of fun. And then we've also got some leafies that we can tuck in. How's it looking? Sometimes it's hard to tell when you're, when you're up close to it like this. It's hard to tell. I don't know if I want all my leafies there at one spot. I think I'm going to spread them out. Spread them out. Put some there. 
put some here, maybe even turn that a little bit, tuck that a bit on top. Yeah, I think I like that better. And then I've got the butterflies. So you remember how I said I was bringing in another color, and it's the blue turquoise shades. And look at that color. Isn't that gorgeous? And I thought it would kind of get me a little bit close to the lagoon. So I went ahead and I just colored in the center and then along the veins with that darker color and then used the light vintage blue to fill in the rest. And I think it created kind of a nice little butterfly. So I want to add a little butterfly up there. And then I've got the two smaller ones. So that was the big butterfly from the In Full Bloom card making stamp set right there. And then these two smaller ones were from the scrapbooking stamp set. So I'm gonna tuck these guys in, maybe one up there and one down here. Yeah, I'm liking how, how that's coming together. I am, I am. All right. Let's go ahead and stick it on. I think we're going to need some foam tape for this. What did I do with my foam tape? There it is. There it is. We're going to add a couple pieces of foam tape to our floral up here. Just like that. When I stick down florals, I don't tend to... Um, I don't tend to stick everything down. I tend to try and have some of the pieces a little bit more free, a little free. In fact, I'm going to use some glue on this with leaves and things. I quite often just glue the stem down and that way it's kind of got natural lift. You get a little bit more, um, get a little rise out of it <laughs> when you do it that way. Let's add a couple pieces of foam tape on here, like so. And this is the regular thickness of foam tape. I think I'm pretty much out of the thin foam tape. <laughs> so everything's going to have a little bit more lift today. And just going to tuck that under there like that. And then our little leafy. And go under there as well. Oh, I'm gonna have to trim, trim, trim. Sometimes that happens once you get the foam tape under there, there's not enough room. You gotta trim. There we go. And then our little butterfly, let's kind of lift his wings a little bit, just like that. And we'll just put a little bit of foam tape down the center of them. Like so. Now, of course, when you stick it in your album, that's not going to be noticeable. But if you decided to stick this in a shadow box, you would definitely see that. And that would be super cool. All right. And then let's go ahead and start adding down here. Let's get our big flower on. I am liking this. There is a chance that I'm going to come back afterwards. I don't want to make you sit and watch me do it, but um, come back afterwards and add just a couple more little leafy things in tucked in around here because I think it needs a couple more leafy things. And um, yes, I think that would be good. And then this little guy, I'm going to add some foam tape on him too, like that. Just in the center. And I think I want them tucked under there. You know what? I'm going to squish him a little bit closer. Maybe. Mm, maybe like that. I'll tuck him, tuck him right in. And my layout is jumping all over. So excited. And this little guy. Actually, I think I'm going to turn this around, maybe. Let me take a look here. I think I want 
more of the leafies going off to the side, so I might turn it around like that. Mm, no, maybe not. I'm going to keep it this way. Like that. Very pretty. I am loving this. I like how the colors have come together. And then this is going to come across like that. And I'm going to tuck this. Yeah, see, I think I want one here and another one here. So let's see. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to need one more. I'm not going to take the time to do it right now. Or maybe I will. Maybe I won't. <laughs> but I'll add another leafy number there. It needs it. it. needs another leafy. There we go. And I'm just trimming off the ends a little bit because the stem's a bit too long. So I'm going to tuck one here for now. And then I'm going to add another one. Another one over there. And I just realized I'm not looking at the comments whatsoever. <laughs> How did I do the background? Oh, it was super fun, Lisa. Um, I just went ahead and took a piece, a seven inch wide piece of paper. This is pattern paper. And then cut a three inch, two inch, one and a half inch, one inch, and three quarters of an inch piece. And then just distress the edges and stuck them down. Super simple. But I think it just creates such a really pretty look. I am loving it. And let's see. There we go. Just tucking that in there like that. And then our little butterflies. I'm going to snip. And snip. So again, these little butterflies were created the same way, or decorated the same way, with just that little bit of the um, turquoise, blue turquoise shades added to them. And there we go with that. Okay, now, I'm liking what's happening here, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick it down. And I'm not going to glue it on this end, because it's going to have some lift just because that distressed edge is there. I'm going to tuck it right in there like that. Just so it tucks right in amongst the, the flowers and the leaves. Isn't that fun? Now, to decide, have we taken a look here? Do we want to leave this with square edges? Or do we want to dovetail the end? What are you guys thinking? What are you thinking? I didn't see... <laughs> Of course, Monica did some fussy cutting, right? Um, uh, rectangle gets your vote. Leave us a rectangle. Okay, we got some votes in there. I think I lay, I'm liking the rectangle too as it's been sitting here. So let's go ahead and we'll stick this down. Leave it as a rectangle. We might as well keep with the shape, right? Repeating shapes are fabulous and just kind of get ourselves positioned there and I'm going to glue just the bottom bits down normally I would do my hand but we're moving along um, because the top bits are going to be affected by the um, the edge distressing so we'll just stick down the bottom part and the top part can just, just hang out just like that. Now, I um, was thinking about adding in a little bit of bling and then I didn't grab it. And I was thinking about the purple dots from the enamel dots collection or the black. So let me grab the black. Let me grab the purple. Or I could just add in some blingity bling, some clear sparkles. Let me see. Oh, my clear sparkles must be on my desk over here. 
Yes, they are. My clear sparkles and my bitty sparkles. So let's take a look at the purple dots first. I also have green ones, but I don't know if they'll work. So let me see. So we've got these darker purple ones. We've got the lighter purple ones that will work too. So we could do a mix. There's also the pinky ones. Oh, maybe the... Mm, yeah, I think either the dark or the lighter purple. We could do that. Or we could do some black dots. Let me pull those out, see if we got any in here. Oh, we've got stars and we've got a few dots. And then we've got clear bitty sparkles. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Should we use clear sparkles? Should we use a mix of purples? Or should we go ahead and use the black ones? Let's see what survey says. We're scrapbooking by committee this evening. <laughs> Joanne says black. Anybody else putting a vote in? I do like, I am a sucker for the black ones. That's why there's always so few left in my package because, <laughs> because I really like them. Mary's saying purple. Lisa says clear or black. Lots of different choices, aren't there? Yeah, the clear ones, they can just sparkle in anywhere, right? Why don't we start out with just a few of the black ones? Let me see. Do I have my piercing tool that I used to lift these with? And let me see. If I'm, I'm, I've used all the medium-sized ones. So we've only got big ones and little ones. So let's see. We could put a big one there and a little one there. And then maybe, oh, there is a medium one. Okay, let's use a medium one. We'll tuck a little medium one in right there. Just to add a little something, something. And then maybe down here, we'll add a big one and a little one. And we're going to kind of jump here. This is going to be a big triangle happening here. <laughs> Alrighty. I think that's good. Maybe we'll add a couple little purple ones in as well. Just tucked in. Ooh, we put them right tight together like that. Very cute. And let's see. We'll add a couple little little guys over here. All right. Now, I'm not looking at it from above, so it's hard for me to tell how things are looking, but I think I'm pretty happy with this layout featuring my Grammy and Granddaddy with their nice clothes on and their beautiful little corsages on and their neighbor Steve. And Steve was um, a great friend to them and he also drove them a lot of places because they never owned a vehicle. And so he would he would come along and and take them places. So I love how we created this background inspired by at Scrappy Soulmate on Pinterest with all of these different sizes of pattern paper going all the way up, creating that really fun sort of, you know, through the window blinds. And I think it kind of sparked because of the siding here too, that I wanted sort of some lines going on my page. And then we added in the, all the beautiful florals from the different uh, stamp sets, the butterflies, our sentiments, even this one from a different stamp set. So we used four different stamp sets to create the embellishments and, and the thin cut as well. And I just think that's so pretty using our tri-blend markers to kind of get something that goes a little matchy-matchy with our pattern paper. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing 
this layout come together, just going through your stash, finding a bunch of stamps and just mixing them all together. And if you know, if you look at your stash and you say, I don't have enough stamps in my stash, then you can pop on to the website and check out the Stamptacular sale because there's great deals on there. All right. Have a wonderful week and we will see you again soon. Toodaloo. Bye.